But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Here is Peter. He was in the prison. I put yourself there. And you, you work for God. You've done something that, you know, is really commendable. But somebody didn't like what you've done. Puts you in prison. What do you do? You'll be thinking about yesterday. What did I do yesterday to earn me this? You'll be thinking about tomorrow. If they're doing this to me today, what am I thinking? What can they do tomorrow? Don't think about that. Yesterday is gone. What did you do yesterday to earn what you have today? Leave that in the hands of God. You did your best yesterday, didn't you? You, you loved the Lord yesterday, didn't you? You served the Lord yesterday, didn't you? And you put all your energy, all your effort into what you had to do, didn't you? Leave that in the hands of God. And tomorrow, the God of today is the God of tomorrow. If you were in Peter's shoes, what would you see? What will you do? That he was kept in the prison and prayer was made without ceasing of the church and the God for him. He didn't know that. He didn't know that anybody was praying. He didn't know that God, you know, God, you know, raised up those people and they were praying. The same thing with you. You don't know how Jesus is praying for you. The angels are hovering around you. The promises of God are yes and amen. All that is bleak and black and you don't know. And because of that, you're wondering, see my situation. And then in verse 6, and when Herod would have brought him forth, when Herod would have brought him forth, Herod had his own plan. But God has a better plan. God has a greater plan. And what if the people of the world are planning something against you? That's what I'm thinking about tomorrow. That's what I'm thinking about tomorrow. Those people, I know what they can do. But don't you know what God can do? He can reverse everything that human beings try to do in your life. He will reverse the negative things. The same night Peter was sleeping. Peter was sleeping. Why? Oh, because he had this message. Now when Jesus gave him fresh, Peter was there. And Jesus said, take no thought about tomorrow. And Peter put that in the heart. And Peter said, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm here in the prison already. It couldn't be darker than it is now. It couldn't be worse than it is now. And whatever will happen has happened to other people before. I'm thinking he must have said the worst is to die. Or well, see the first person, Stephen is dead already. And James is dead already. What's going to happen to Peter that has not happened to other people before? Because of that, go to sleep. And not worry about tomorrow. And about what people will do, what Herod will do the next moment or the next day or the next week. And then we're told in that verse 6, he was sleeping between, between two soldiers bound, were two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Now, if he worried, would he have seen that revelation? Well, you know that an angel was coming. You know, when we're worried, our eyes are closed. Our mind is closed. Our brain shuts up. We cannot use our brain or our mind. All the promises escape us when we're worried and anxious. If you can't do anything, just sleep. And then God will take care of the rest. And then it says in that verse 8, And the angel said unto him, Get up, get thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and followed him, and wist not that it was true. That was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. Now, if we're worried about the iron gate that leads into the city, what's our worry going to do? Well, the worry unlock the lock and open the iron gate. The answer is no. I think we hurt ourselves when we're worried, when we're anxious. Oh, I was thinking, look at that iron door before me. 
Before I escape and get to that place, I'm imagining now those uh, guards on my side, they're going to just suddenly wake up and they're going to say, Where is Peter? Worry will be imagining a lot of terrible things. Don't worry, just keep on following the angel. When you get to the iron door, whatever miracle you need will come right there. And then it says right there, when they passed the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that led us into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. The people don't worry. Many things will open before you of their own accord. And they went out and passed through one street and fourth ways. The angel departed from him. And when Peter was come unto himself, he said, Now I know of a shorty. You are going to know. And you know, if you don't worry, all these lessons we're having, all these teachings we're having, all these studies we've been having, all these weeks, if you'll get everything to heart, and whatever happens, whatever, whatever happens, you don't get yourself anxious, you don't get yourself worried, you will soon discover, in fact, you know, one day you are going to come back with your testimony. That iron doors are beginning to open. Because you see, when there's no worry or anxiety, and you're leaning upon the everlasting arms, your faith will be very, very strong. And great will be the deliverance of the Lord upon your life. Acts chapter 16 verse 25 Acts 16 verse 25 And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed Now don't, don't, uh, you don't just stop there They prayed uh, But you know there are many kinds of prayer You know people pray in fear People pray panicking People pray anxious People they pray they are worried to death People pray and they are crying They are screaming People pray and they're so fearful as if the enemy is just about to get them. People pray in self-pity. You know, the, in this dungeon, in the prison where they were, if you were there, put yourself in their position. And now all this has happened to you, what will you do? You say, I will pray, but how will you pray? Maybe you'll be praying with fear. If they have done this to me today, what are they going to do tomorrow? Is that prayer? And if this is happening to me now, when we wake up in the morning and those people, when they perfect their plans, what are they going to do to me? Is that prayer? That's an anxiety. That is worry. If you are going to pray and your prayer is going to be answered, you are going to pray with faith, then get all the worry, all the anxiety out of your heart. And it says they were in the prison. At midnight they prayed and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. You know the people who don't worry, your mind is at rest. Your soul is at rest. And then you offer a prayer unto the Lord with praise. It's going to get to the very throne of God so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. It's going to happen. Because you see, when the Lord is directing us and leading us and we're not anxious, we're obedient to the word of the Lord. Every step, it will guide. Every step, it will lead. It's an unnecessary distraction to worry or to be anxious about tomorrow. There are men who waste their last hours on earth fretting over a moral. They never see. If we are preserved till tomorrow, it will not, will it not bring with it tomorrow's God. What good can your worry do? It, it does not empty tomorrow of its problems and trials, but it empties today of its strength and comfort. You're worrying about tomorrow. That's not going to affect tomorrow. It's not going to change anything tomorrow. It's not going to silence the devil of tomorrow. It's not going to make the temptation of tomorrow not to come. It only makes you paralyzed and weakened for the problems and challenges of today. 
summon all your energies, all your intelligence, all the grace and the strength that you have for the problems of today. And then when you are strong today, that will even strengthen your moral spiritual muscles for tomorrow. For you to be ready for the things of tomorrow. That's why worrying about tomorrow does not enable us to escape the future. A future trouble. It only weakens you and makes you unfit to cope with, the, with those challenges when tomorrow eventually comes. Worrying about tomorrow often leads to hurtful imagination. Which will produce wrong thinking and self-induced negative prophecies and tormenting fear. Don't try to cross the bridge before you get there, but cheerfully carry the cross of today and leave the future to God. It will be there before you get there. Yeah. When tomorrow dawns and its door swings open, the power and the promises of God will be waiting for you to welcome you to a new day. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25, Deuteronomy chapter 33, Verse 25, here we're told of the great promise of God. I believe this is for you. I said this is for you. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And if you believe that promise, what are you thinking about weakness tomorrow? About scarcity tomorrow? About oppression tomorrow? About discouragement tomorrow? Because as thy days, so shall thy strength be. B. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, we're looking at verse 23. Here in verse 23, it says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Don't you know there's a God in heaven that directs our steps? And if there is a God in heaven that directs our steps, why don't we rely on him and just leave everything in his hand? In chapter 29 of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, we're looking at verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected edge. And then he tells us, it says, then he shall call upon me. And then it says, as you call upon him, he shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Amen. Amen. We're going to reap the benefit of that in Jesus' name. We're going to point number two now. What do we do then? If we're not to worry about tomorrow, and we just leave tomorrow in God's hands, what we'll do is make the best use of today. That's all you have. Make the best use of today. In, that's point number two now. Labor today with God's guidance and great faith. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. They take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Remember that word evil, now that's not talking about sin. Sufficient unto the day is the challenge thereof, is the duty thereof, is the responsibility thereof, is the event thereof. Every time you wake up and you say, this is a new day. Don't worry about the following day. Just say, what am I going to do today that will contribute to my life in the future? What's today giving me as a challenge? What are the duties of today? What are the deeds, the actions of today that will propel me forward? What am I going to do today that I will know is contributing to my progress in the future? Psalm 118, we're looking at verse 24. Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day when you wake up in the morning. This is what I have. This is the day. And because this is the day, I'm going to make sure that this day is filled full. You're not going to waste any day. That day, you just say in the morning, this is the day. This is the day. 
It's a gift from God. And because it's a gift from God, I'm going to make use of this day. Our business is what today. We can have divine supply for today's consumption to import the possible burden of tomorrow into the duties of this day will decrease or deplete the strength which is meant for only today's responsibility. You know, it's like the children of Israel. The Lord told them to go and gather manna. And he gathered the manna for that day. And the Lord said, now, each every day you gather today. And then he was thinking, what will happen tomorrow? Those people that were worried about the following day, they didn't cheat up everything. They just left it there. And then the following day, when they opened up everything, the containers, it was bringing out worms. It was useless. Because the manner of today is meant for today. The grace of today is meant for today. The strength of today is meant for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. And that's why many people, they do not finish anything perfectly. Whatever they are to do today, they don't finish it perfectly and seal it up and know that this is done. And it's well done. They are worrying about tomorrow. Already they are here today and they are doing some work today. They leave that work unfinished and they are thinking about tomorrow, about tomorrow. And because of that, every day has an unfinished work, an unfinished assignment. When tomorrow brings its burden, the God of tomorrow will bring its, he will see its sufficient grace and strength. Today, we recall the vigor you have to deal with its immediate problem, challenges or evils. There is no need to import the cares from the future to load today or the trials that have not, that have not yet arrived will be to overload this day. Anxiety is dangerous, but anxiety about things which have not yet happened is doubly dangerous and unnecessary venom that poisons and destroys us. Worry about the future is useless. It achieves nothing. It is a pure waste of energy. Worry about the future cripples you in the present. It lessens your efficiency with regard to today. The wisest thing is not to spend your energy looking for solutions to imaginary problems of the future, which may never happen really. Every day has its problem, its challenges, its duty, its responsibility. Every day has a daily quota of problems. If you want to go through life without being caged under unbearable loads of problems, treat each day as a unit. Do not carry yesterday or tomorrow what you live for today in God's strength. And at the end of the day, rest in the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, we're looking at verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with all thy might. Today, here is today. And whatever your hand finds to do today, do it with all your might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither Thou goest. When you wake up in the morning, just say, this is all I have. This is all I'm sure of. This day, today. And I'm going to fill it to the brim. I'm going to do everything I need to do so that this day will leave a mark of progress in my life. In Psalm 104, I'm reading from verse 23. Psalm 104, verse 23. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. Don't loaf, don't be idle, don't be lazy. Get something done for today. That you'll be able to say, this is what I did. And the way you can do that is, 